Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. We got a fun one for you today. It's a little bit of a follow on from yesterday's where we did a bit of coding. I've got three images here. If you look at those images, they're going to slowly morph into different images. And we're doing this over a sort of period of 20 seconds. So you sort of get 10 seconds on each image there. And then it's going to fade back into the original image. That's a really eye catching thing to have on your site. Great use of images too. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Now let's roll down. And I'll delete this little row we've got here with the morphing images there or the fading images, I should say. A little green tab for a row. Okay, and I got a little code module under here. I'm going to delete that one also. Let's add us a new little row. I'm going to use three columns in mine. And in the first one here, I'm going to throw an image module, funnily enough. Add whatever image you want to your module here. I guess I'll use the same ones that I had. i use that one there. Now I'm going to clone this image. Just save that. Two little squares there. Click on it. It'll duplicate it for us. Drag one across to wherever you want to put it. I'm going to do the same thing here. Drag one across. Of course, you can have as many or as a few in your row as you wish. Now let's go in and we'll just change these out a little bit. We'll pop that one in. And we'll switch out this one also. And we'll pop that one. Great. Well, the way this is going to work, these are our original images here, and I want them to slowly fade out and reveal some different images. To do that, we're going to go into the row itself, the green tab, and we're going to put some images in the columns that these original images are sitting in. Now, if you've watched my hover effects before, you'll know how to do this. So I'm going to go into that first column. Down to background, always find background under content there. I'm going to pop an image in the background. Now you won't see these images because they're behind the images that are on top there. Once we've got that in there, we can save that. We'll do the same thing for the next two. And last one. Every time I save, it's taking us back to the main row settings. I can select the next column. Great, so we've got six images there and they're kind of stacked on top of each other. Let's just pop this row on top here. I'm just going to grab the little cross there for the handle, left mouse, hold it, drop it where you want it. Great. Okay, I'm going to add a little code module now. And we'll write a little bit of code to make this happen. Okay, I'm going to put this code down below the video when I'm done here. But it's always a good idea to get in the habit of writing CSS because you can take your design skills to the next level. And it's really not difficult. The only thing I can't put down below are these style tags because of the pointed brackets. So you'll have to write your own if you're using a code module. And style tags are left pointy, the word style, S-T-Y-L-E, and right pointy, bracket. Once you put the right one in, it puts a closing tag in there. That tells it that this is CSS that we're writing here. First thing we have to do is come up with a class name. All class names have a dot or a period in front when you write them as code. So let's call it IMFD. That's my shorthand for image fade, if you like. We can open and close some more curly brackets here. What do we want it to do? Well, I want to create an animation where they sort of fade out and fade back in again. So I'm going to say animation, colon, then we have to give it a name. And let's say FDIM, it's a backwards version of my class name there. You can call yours what you want, but it needs to be unique. I'm going to have mine run for 20 seconds, pretty slow. You can speed it up or slow it down. Obviously speed it up by giving it a lower number. This will become apparent, apparent in a little while. Or slow it down with a larger number. 
And I wanted to keep on going and going. So I'm going to say infinite or infinite. Great. Now we have to create this little animation. We're going to be using keyframes for this. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, keyframes are like stop frame photography. We've got a timeline, 20 seconds. We can use keyframes to make things happen along that timeline. So to do that, we're going to say at keyframes, then the name of it, which was FDIM. Now we can close some more curly brackets, or we can actually create what we want it to do. Well, when it starts off, I just want to see our initial image there. So at 0%, when the page loads, basically, or second one of our 20 seconds up there. So I'm putting 0%. I'm going to open some more curly brackets here. Inside, I'm going to say opacity. And that's how much you can see through an image. Colon 1. That is fully visible, so it's no see-through at all. So you can't see the image behind it. I'm now going to copy this from the zero to the closing curly bracket there, and drop down. I'm going to paste it two times. At 50%, I'm going to make that a zero. So halfway along our 20 seconds, at basically the 10 second mark, this image, or any image we apply this class name to, is going to become invisible and reveal the image that's stacked behind it. Then when it gets back to 100%, the 20 second mark, I want it to be visible again. So it's sort of fading. It's in, it's fading out, and it's going to fade back in, and it'll fade back out again when we do that. Now, of course, you can't see any animation happening because we haven't applied this class name. And you can apply this to anything, and it'll make it disappear and come back in a 20 second. You can do it with a blurb module if you want, or any module you want. But it's going to work best with our images here. So let's copy the class name without the dot, just IMFD. I'm going to copy that. Let's save our changes here. I'm going to go into each of these images, dark tab for the module. Always find CSS IDs and classes under advanced at the top here. We're using a class name, so make sure you put it in here, not with CSS ID. Once I put it in there, Look what's going to happen. That image is going to start to fade out. It's going to be there for about 10 seconds or so. Then it's going to start to fade back in slowly. And like I say, you can slow that down or speed it up by changing that 20 second value. To make it happen on any other module, I'm sure you're ahead of me on this. You need to go into whatever module you want to work on. Give it that same class name. Same for our last one here. Now we've got them all fading in and out. And when I stop and save this and, and reload the page, they'll all be in sync with each other. Now, if you don't want to use a code module, code modules are great because I'm just using this feature on this page. If you wanted to use this throughout the site, you could put it in your custom CSS panel. I'll show you how to do that quickly. Let's just go into the code module. Now, when you're putting it in your custom CSS or your additional CSS panel, you don't need these style tags. You only need them within a code module. So it'll be just this code here, which you'll find down below the video. You can copy it. If you go down to your dashboard, Go down to Divi. We're on the first tab here, which is general. If you slide down to the bottom of the page, you've got a custom CSS tab right here. If there's something in there, you can just shoot it down with your return key. Once you've put your code in there, you can save your changes. If you're going to do it this way, you don't need your code module on this page because you don't need that code written twice in there. So you can delete that if you want to. Now let's save our changes, make sure everything's going to work on the front end. We'll exit the Visual Builder. Roll down to our little images there. And as you can see, they're fading out into each other and they're synchronized. And that's a great little feature to have on your site.
Now, like I say, we posted this into our custom CSS. You don't have to put it here. You can just use that code module if you're just using that page for it. But if you want this site-wide, you can use this CSS class name on any page you want. And it'll do exactly the same thing. So there we have it, guys. There's some slow fade image, almost like an image morph, that you can apply to any image on your site by putting a background image behind it. Really nice little feature. If that sort of thing's happening, it's going to get people's attention fairly quickly. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.